Welcome back folks to this expedition through discrete mathematics. Today we focus our attention on functions. Yeah, functions. But this time we are going to approach the very essence of function. What does it mean that something is a function? Naturally, we need a new notation and that's where the lambda calculus up on this board comes in. Yeah, I know it sounds horrific, but you are in for a real surprise when we enter a bright new world. Rich expressions expressed in a pretty syntax, all working smoothly because the machine, seen as the dog above, does everything obediently and correctly. What machine? The Lambda Calculus Evaluation Machine. Here's a simple function fx equal to x square plus 1. We can see it's a parabola. We can also notice some properties of this function. For example, y rises faster than x and here are some sample points. So at 0 it is 1, at 2 it is 5, at minus 2 also it is 5 and so on and so forth. All these properties we capture in this graph. When in math we say fx is x squared plus 1, what really are we defining? Are we defining f? Hmm, then the definition must be of the form f is something. But we don't have that. So let's strike that off. What about x? Are we defining x? Then we should have x equal to something. Or at least we must have an equation that could be solved to give specific values of x. Not the case here. Strike off x and what remains? How about fx? Could it be that we are defining fx? Here are two functions fx equal to x square plus 1 and gy is y square plus 1. Are these the same or different? For every x, f gives the same fx that g gives for gy. So only the names f and g are different. The behaviors are identical. At this point, we make a small digression to understand explicit and implicit forms. Equations like x equal to 3, we will call explicit. Equations like x square minus 5x plus 6 equal to 0 by contrast are called implicit. The first just says what x is. The second is more in the nature of a rule about x. We need both. So how do we translate between implicit and explicit? When we solve an equation like x square minus 5x plus 6 equal to 0, we get the two answers x equal to 2 or x equal to 3. This is the process of going from implicit to explicit which we can call explification. In the reverse direction when we take two data points x equal to 3 or x equal to 2 and combine them and then simplify them this process is going from an explicit rule to an implicit one. This process we can call implication. Having understood this 
basic principle for simple variables and simple values we will now apply that to functions so when we have a function fx is x squared plus 1 we really have an equation and a hidden understanding and what is that understanding that we are interested in the solution in f to the equation for all x fx is x squared plus 1 we want this hidden thing to become evident to become visible what are these hidden aspects a name like f or g or h that is bound to a rule and a rule that is the functionality of the function its functionness comes from this rule and with a new definition syntax we need to combine these two sides into one to bind the name to a rule that is a definition So we have three functions in front of us f g and h and they have the same right hand sides x squared plus y So now we have a question are f g and h the same because their right hand sides are the same Let's quickly look at their graphs f as we've already seen is a parabola it's quadratic in x and y in this context is a constant so we have seen x squared plus 1 where y was 1 g is linear in its argument the argument is y and we have that g is linear in y and in relation to this y the x square whether it is quadratic or not doesn't matter it's just a constant so we have a line h is an interesting guy x and y are both its arguments and therefore it's quadratic in one which is x and linear in the other which is y and therefore you have both the properties in this graph the parabola as well as the line and we have this interesting surface that emerges church came across this problem while studying the foundations of mathematics in the 1930s alonzo church so looking at an expression like x square plus y he came to the need to be very precise in saying whether this expression was a function of x or of y or of both to start with he started putting a caret a kind of little cap to indicate which it was a function of but then there was a little problem the mathematics typewriter he was using made it easier to type a lambda than a caret and thus was born the lambda calculus so rewriting our functions following professor church we have f is defined as the function which takes x to x squared plus y and so the rule is heralded by the lambda sign and the definition with the equal sign if you wish you can read the lambda as the function which dot 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 likewise g and h and now it is very clear in this form that although they have an expression body which is the same x square plus y they are different functions f being the function that takes x to x square plus y g being the function that takes y to x square plus y and h 
the function that takes the pair xy to x squared plus y. In summary, in this module we talked of implicit and explicit. First for simple variables and equations, then carried over the same principle to function definitions and that transformation from implicit to explicit and back was effected by using lambda terms.